I'm going to talk about coaching. Before I get kind of into the backstory of it, though, I just want to reminisce about a few things. I always love those kind of summer barbecues with friends when you catch up over beers and you share that kind of common background of when you were students at school. And for me and my bunch of friends, the kind of common story that keeps coming up was this religious education class on a Thursday afternoon. And at a Catholic boys' school, with the rowdiness and short attention spans, we remembered a couple of important things. We remember the teacher. And she was this elderly nun who had those amazing stories of her lifetime in the church. You could tell those anecdotes and the stories that would make the boys learn and think about class. And this was the second thing that we remembered. The second thing we remembered was this overhead projector. And I'm sure you've been in classes as well and you remember this from your education. But she used the kind of the next version of this. What she used to do at the beginning of class would pull out her roll of transparencies from her bag. And she would attach the transparencies to the top of the projector and then proceed to unroll it and clip it to the bottom. And in this really kind of sadistic fashion, she used to twist the handle while she talked. And while she talked, and when the boys started talking, she would wind it ever so faster in a kind of classroom management style to make sure that you'd keep up with the notes. And me and my friends, you kind of look back and you laugh and you giggle about this. But it does show how there's been a, such a profound change in the use of technology in classrooms. I think also a really profound change in how learning occurs across my lifetime. And I think another important lesson to think about, and it still holds true today, is that just because this technology, and just because you can, doesn't always mean that you should be using it in lessons. And that balance over the can and the should, I think, comes back to the classroom teacher. The classroom teacher who has that really strong understanding of pedagogy, both in the context of their subject and the context of their classroom. And I think when you lose that, um, it's a real struggle. And there's so much written now about what we understand as best practice in teaching and learning. Um, Andrew, Andrew referred to this in his talk about approaches to learning by the IB. Things like collaboration, we know how important that is to foster that culture in our class. Ideas around metacognition and reflection and how that works. And it's written about by a huge variety of authors now. And if you're a bit geeky like me, some of these might be your summer reading lists and what sits in your Amazon basket, much to your wife's disgust. And I think, if you think about how technology is used here, I think technology is seen as a way that can enhance what we do as our current best practice. But teachers shouldn't be forgetting about the things that always have worked really well in their classrooms. And I and I don't think that teachers need to know the intricacies of how the technology works. I think that comes down to the coach. And you can pick my friend Jeff uh, in the picture, you can pick which one of the four people is a coach in the situation. <laughs> and I think the coach really enjoys like, unpacking people's professional practice and trying to find ways where technology adds the benefit. And they really enjoy that challenge. But one of my points is that I don't think the coaches get invited into those conversations as much as they would like. And that's at United World College, that's my role as a coach. And so I really enjoy, in this example, of where a history teacher, really diligently, he's gone off and he's figured out how to make a Google form. He's changed his theme and he's added a video. And then really diligently, he's gone away and added 28 different questions to his Google form but I know he has a really good understanding of how he teaches history. And when you see him teach, he's able to sort of unpick people's misconceptions in their class. And I think that's where I enjoy having those conversations with the teacher. And then when I can think about and push him to say, why don't you make a multi-choice to unpack that misconception about the Cold War? And when you do that, can you try to get some data? And can you use that data to start informing your practice and to differentiate in the classroom? I don't expect him, though, to know about how to tweak his form and how to get to the data. I think that's the role of the coach, and to start those conversations. And if you look at teachers that I work with in my job at United World College, I love working with teachers that are, 
have a really strong understanding how learning occurs in their classroom. And they hold true to that learning that occurs. But they're also the people that are really open to thinking and experimenting in their classrooms. They're opening the ideas of opening the door and being willing to experiment slightly and to have those conversations with a coach. And this is a grade six class doing reading and writing and writer's workshop. And the activity is really like a, it's a perfect analog activity. The kids are talking together, got post-it notes, uh, annotating the text. And I wouldn't want to get rid of this. Um, <clears throat> but as a coach, I really enjoy where you can kind of enhance this practice, where you can come together and help kids tell the story through, um, through speaking and using imagery to support the discussion. And to me, this is my sort of vision of technology, where you have the analog on one side, and that's the best practice piece, and the things that teachers really cherish and that students love. On the other side, you've got that use of technology that clearly enhances what's going on. I don't know if it's transformation, people bandy that word around lots. I just think it's a nice example of how it enhances learning without deteriorating what we already know is best practice. So here's your challenge when you go to school next week on Monday. It's to try have those conversations with a coach. And I think a Southeast Asia is extremely privileged to have coaches in lots of schools. And if you're a coach, put your hand up. Who's a coach in this room? There you go. So look around, and if they are some of the people in your school that can support you to have that conversation. And I don't think the nun who taught me a very long time ago, I don't think she had a coach to work with. And I think we are quite privileged to have those people in our schools. And so for coaches, I think be prepared to talk to teachers about their practice. And sort of sometimes forget about the bells and whistles, but talk really clearly about their practice and where you see, it, where you see technology enhancing that practice. And I think together, those conversations can be really good to support student learning moving forward. So thank you. <laughs>